I'll speak now primarily only on a neglected perilunate dislocation. Uh, it's kind of, you have missed, we have missed the bus and now what to do? Commonly it's missed because x-rays are not assessed well and there are other major injuries and the wrist is kind of given the secondary treatment. So we kind of miss looking at it once the patient gets out of all medical surgical issues at three weeks, four weeks, the wrist is assessed and you have something like this, okay? Uh, almost one in four perilunates have been missed. I think I've missed one or two. They present primarily with pain over the wrist joint. They don't present with anything else. Now, if they don't move the wrist, they don't usually have pain. So the moment you ask them to move the wrist, they'll get the pain. So imagine uh, a patient who comes to you just mild pain, but there is a lot of stiffness and pain is only on movement. You please assess the wrist carefully, okay? The other two things that I've seen in missed perilinate dislocations is a, a complex regional pain syndrome. Uh, I'm sure everybody would have seen them either with a lot of pain, edema, swelling all through, or just some neural pain, persistent neural pain, but not at the wrist. So kindly assess for any nerve involvement or any CRPS syndrome when you see a missed perilunate. Any stage, Prashant talked about a few, Parak talked about a few, any stage of perilunate, whether it be a lunate dislocation or transcaphoid or greater arc, lesser arc, can be missed. So please assess the x-rays carefully. Whenever you see an x-ray like the one in the center, if you are not able to find out what's wrong, go back to this, the left-hand side x-ray. Keep it with you in, the, in your phone. Compare and see the gillula's arc and then assess the x-rays in the center. And this is for acute as well as missed. Or you take the x-rays of the opposite side. For me, in a missed situation, I would like to do at least one of the two things, CT scan or an MRI. For me, I prefer an MRI. This is not to diagnose the PLD, but is to diagnose the soft tissue condition, as well as if you can get the assessment of the cartilage of the radius and the cartilage of the capitate, and we'll talk about it, why these two particular bones. So if you have a very poor cartilage, then we know we are trying to go into a salvage procedure. If you find good cartilage level, like you can see here, there's a good cartilage at the radius, then you might be able to do some preservative surgery. If the patient does have median nerve symptoms or any other nerve issues, get an e EMG NCV done because it's medical legally important, as well as it will decide whether you need to go volar or not, like uh, Prashant had mentioned. Now, what are the options? Uh, for me, these are the five options. Sorry, these are the four options. The newer methods I have not tried out non-operative, fixation, plus or minus distraction, a proximal or carpectomy, and fusion. Now, this should kind of cover all your missed perilunates. God, hopefully you should not reach that level. I've had five patients in the last, say, eight or nine years of my practice whom I have conserved. Now, these have presented to me at six weeks, but primarily these were elderly patients, more than 75, did not have any much use of the hand. Probably it was a non-dominant hand or there were some fitness issues even at, uh, say, six months down the line. I treat them either with splint in functional position for three months, or I cast them in, in a functional position for three months. Remember, this is not an ideal scenario. This is a very limited subset of patients who may not tolerate the surgery or may not need that surgery because their function is less, okay? For me, the, the aim is to kind of get them into a fibrous ankylosis in that functional position. It's like a fused wrist, but you have not done any surgery. My maximum follow-up is four years, and I'm, sh I'm hoping to follow them up uh, further. But at four years, they have done quite well. Most of the patients with the reconstructive or salvage procedures will always have some pain. They will not be pain-free. They will always have some stiffness. So assess them that whether they fit into this particular subset criteria where they can be managed non op ORIF. Now, uh, delayed presentation can be anywhere be between four weeks, one month, three months, six months. The younger, the earlier you see, you can do an open reduction and internal fixation. Prashant just discussed a really nice way through the dorsal approach. It's always start off with the dorsal approach. You can try and get everything back in place and fix the way Prashant said. I like to open volar only if I'm just unable to get the lunate back in place. I always start dorsal. 
try to get the lunate back. Don't keep poking. Use some blunt instrument. And if you are unable to get the lunate back into the radial, in the lunate fossa of the radius, you can go volar and then push it back. The other in indication to open volar would be uh, if the patient has persistent median nerve symptoms. Uh, I have no experience with distracting this joint, like a missed perilunate, you dist put a distractor, distract it out to length and do reduction. Uh, once we open it to uh, questions, maybe the seniors can throw light upon it. I've done about five, and again, the results are not excellent, they're about fair. They usually end up having uh, 50 degrees of extension to 50 degrees of flexion, and the, the visual analog scale uh, for the pain score is all about one or two, it's never zero. The principles of fixation remain the same. You try and get that diamond shape back, either with wires, reconstruct the ligaments for lesser arc, or fix the scaphoid if it's a greater arc. This I, done, I have done this at six months. The, the, I would have actually done a PRC for him, but he was a 21-year-old male, very young patient. We did attempt an open reduction. We did get a reduction back. I didn't fix the scaphoid or didn't graft the scaphoid. The reason was I just want the alignment to be good. The x-ray on the uh, right side is at about one year, and he's not yet collapsed. I'm assuming as he, as he ages, he will definitely collapse and may end up having some scaphoid non-union uh, complications, but I'll probably tackle it at a later date. But I'm hoping to give him at least 10 years of uh, decent risk function. Uh, Dr. Patankar will show you the video of uh, proximal carpectomy after this. This is primarily used, is, or I think it's the workhorse for missed PLDs. We remove all the proximal carpal row. You try and get the capitate back. Okay, I'll, you try and get the capitate back onto the radial fossa. And this is where the MRI is important. Or you can assess on table. The cartilage of the radius and the cartilage of the capitate should be good. So only in that way, only in that situation, uh, your PRC will work. It gives you a, a decent range of movement with a decent pain relief. Uh, I have uh, no experience with capsular interposition, but it is a described procedure. If it's a young patient, you don't want to fuse, and the cartilage is poor, you can use the dorsal capsule when you're approaching the wrist. You can put, make a flap and interpose it in between the capitate and the uh, lunate fossa. I've just done one wrist fusion for this scenario. Now, wrist fusions is the most, it's one of the morbid procedures, but it does give you a good pain relief. For me, when I went in, I actually, we went in to do a PRC, but the cap, the, everything was in a poor shape. Uh, I have, like I said, I have no experience with the capsule interposition, and we ended up doing a wrist fusion. The fu in, fusion in PLD is different than when you do it in other scenarios. You really need to get all the proximal row fragments out and you end up fusing the capitate to the uh, radial fossa. This is not the routine wrist fusion that you do. There are newer options that are available. Uh, wrist arthroplasty, there is a limited wrist arthroplasty. Wrist denervation is coming up in a good way. Some of the uh, seniors might throw light on it. You kind of leave the wrist exactly the way it is, but just denervate all around. So in summary, try not to miss the bus. I think the first two talks really gave a good idea of how not to miss the bus. You should have a high index of suspicion in a wrist which is stiff and painful. Get an x-ray. If you can't see anything on an x-ray, get a CT or an MR. You can try open reduction in the earlier part, or you can always have a salvage procedure ready if, you, if, you don't, if you're not able to get uh, the open reduction right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.